Uh, I, my name is Don Gowski. I'm Redevelopment Counsel for Belmar Waterfront Development, LLC, uh, and Big Timber Junction, LLC, which is the designated redeveloper of the Belmar Waterfront Development Project. This is a DDA, or Brownfield Development Area Committee meeting. It's, uh, uh, we're having the meeting because the site is a designated Brownfield Development Area, or BDA, by the state of New Jersey. It was so designated six or more years ago by the state uh, in a competitive process. Belmar uh, and Deptford both applied for the site to be a BDA, and the state determined it, it qualified. Only about a dozen sites in the state have ever qualified as a BDA, and it was uh, cited as a BDA for a couple reasons. One, the site was contaminated. It was next to a tidal creek, and there was contaminants leaching into the creek. So the DEP strongly desired that someone clean up and stop the contaminants from going into the creek. Um, and secondly, because it was um, a, a, in a developed area of the state, this Belmar is, uh, was first developed in the 50s and 60s, or primarily developed in the 50s and 60s, I guess. Um, it's a mature community. And there's not a lot of free land available in most mature communities, including Belmar. So the state thought it would be very beneficial to the borough of Belmar uh, if this site could be redeveloped and eventually put back into some kind of productive use. When you have big industrial or landfill sites that are no longer used, and this site wasn't used for 50 years, um, it's a drain on the budget for the, the municipality and the school district because there's just minimal taxes being collected. Um, oftentimes, properties of this type Taxes don't get paid, and eventually um, the town forecloses. Uh, and that wasn't the case here with the BWD site, but I believe the firm did acquire some of phase three 40, 50 years ago through tax foreclosures. So um, we're here uh, uh, to have this meeting to inform the public and the committee of what's been happening since the last meeting. So we're going to talk about <coughs> remediation, which is cleaning up and, and improving the environmental quality. We're going to talk about also redevelopment and some of the things associated with redevelopment uh, and some of the other state agencies involved in that process, uh, including the NJDOT, uh, both uh, pipelines and highway construction, um, uh, and, and I'm sorry, DEP is, is uh, pipelines and DOT is highway construction. So we're going to talk about some other state agencies and other county and other agencies that we interact with, including Dufford Township. Um, so with that, um, I'd like to introduce some of the team here. Uh, this is Mr. Gary Brown, who is a professional engineer. He's the president of RT Environmental. He's a nationally recognized expert in uh, landfill remediation and brownfield development. He testifies and lectures and uh, goes around the country explaining to people the right way to do things in this kind of work. Ms. Jen Berg is also with RT Environmental. She's an environmental professional um, who has been on this project for how many years now, Jen? Ten. Ten years. Um, she, she has done everything from supervise and observe uh, incoming soil material to reviewing testing to providing records to the DEP and other folks. Um, and she puts her boots on, goes into the field when necessary, and she does the spreadsheet analysis when necessary. So we're very happy to have Jen on the team. Um, um, we have Mr. Sean Jackson here. Sean has also been on this project for about 10 years. Uh, Sean is a uh, lobbyist uh, at the state level and is uh, very well known to the folks in Trenton on both the Republican and Democratic side. And through at least four different governors, I think, at this point, uh, we've been able to go up and speak to the right people uh, at the state level, at the different state agencies, including the governor's office, including the EDA and the DEP and the DOT. Um, and we, we might not always like what they say, but we can always get the meeting. And that's showing is very important in making sure that uh, the wishes of Belmar are heard at the state level. Um, so with that, I'd like to also welcome Mr. Ron Rinkowski from uh, the NJDEP. Uh, Ron is our project manager. 
One of the benefits of being a BDA is that you get a project manager. Most sites don't have project managers. Uh, so it, it helps when we're trying to get permits or uh, we need guidance from the DEP on how to do something or what the DEP would like to see. Um, so thank you, Ron, for, for coming down here. Um, if, if you're not aware, um, several years ago, the state of New Jersey uh, created the, the license and the, the position of LSRP, or Licensed Site Mediation Professional. This was a trend around the country, which New Jersey followed. Um, there were literally thousands of contaminated sites in the state of New Jersey that were not being addressed, uh, and for which the DEP you know, wasn't granted the budget to visit or observe or monitor. So um, the state created through legislation uh, the LSRP position. There is a, an educational and experience requirement as well as a testing requirement. Uh, Gary is an LSRP. What that means is he is able to uh, interact um, as uh, uh, an agent and a uh, representative to explain to property owners what the DEP is going to require in a remediation. Uh, he's sort of an intermediary. He has professional responsibility to the state of New Jersey, not to his individual clients. He has a code of ethics and a code of professional responsibility and policies and procedures, which aren't very much different than the DEP's own policies and procedures, but now the DEP has uh, authorized professional engineers to use the guidelines they published under the LSRP program to uh, help address a lot more sites than they could on their own. So again, that's been a national trend which New Jersey has followed, and uh, Gary is, in addition to a professional engineer, is a licensed LSRP. So with that, um, I'd like to turn it over to Gary for a brief history. Uh, for those of you who may not have been to prior meetings, um, uh, this site uh, was used for a landfill for a significant period of time. It used to be a tidal, beautiful tidal estuary all the way up the Creek Road. Um, but then at some point, um, municipalities, including Belmar, needed a place to put their trash. Uh, and like a lot of other towns, Belmar established a place in the town to take municipal waste from its citizens. So with that, I'll have to turn over to Gary, please. <coughs> By the way, does anybody need this? This is the PowerPoint. Everybody got one? Okay, great, thank you. I heard about half of you were saying, why is it taking so long? Uh, it does take a long time on the difficult sites, but what I want to say on behalf of the people from Belmar would have talked about behalf of the mayor and now the guy who's running the, the, the agency that's going to do this in the next phase. Nothing ever stopped. So I'm going to tell you very simply there's three phases. Then we'll go back and we'll let you see where it was, where it is now. Um, we'll just generally all the slides through. But we have three phases. Very early on, we recognized this is a big site. 139 acres and three landfills. On the larger brownfield sites, on the larger places where we have this. And we didn't want to overdo it. Because we can go about it, okay, that's fine. Um, what we're worried about is the site is so big is we can't get the roads in, number one. And number two, people are going to say, how am I going to get all this money? So we're at the eve of something that I can tell you is very nice. We already have the permits in for phase one. That's the part that's up here, um, Route 42. Then comes phase two, then for phase three. The reason this was important, people don't just walk into these sites and say, well, we got a big check bump. We wanted to make sure that the state could give us a liability release for each piece at a time so it wasn't so overwhelming. I can tell you right now, the final plans are under discussion for the roads. The roads are a big deal. This is one of the biggest places of traffic, except for Route 3 in front of the Hackensack Metal in the entire state. He's been talking about it for 20 years, but I'll let him, you can talk to him after this if you don't believe it, but it's true. The important part is people are looking at phase one real close now. There is an understanding of how the roads will come together, and we're on the eve of being able to lose things. DEP has the permit application that I prepared and Jen prepared, and if somebody comes in and says, I want, they can turn around right away. Then phase two will go, and then phase uh, three will go. 
This is the way it looked all the way to 1979. This is the landfill, the way it looked, not properly closed. And that's what we basically spent all the time doing. Uh, we started in 2004, we did the whole site, the DDP's input, and it was extremely helpful because we found out that we could improve things and it occurred relatively quickly. Major thing, this site, not many like it in the state, there's clay underneath. It does not affect water supplies. That's why it never became a super fun site. It doesn't mean we don't have to do anything. This is not pretty, okay? We had to get all the water off it. We had to make sure what Don was talking about, the contaminants did not run into Big Timber Creek. Show the next slide. Yeah, no, I was just showing that slide. Yeah, this is when all the landfills were pretty much to capacity. You know, you have the you have the borough section as your phase three, and you have phase two, which is adjacent to Creek Road, and then your phase one, which is adjacent to Route 42. This is 42. This is 295. Right. And, and although we call it one, two, and three, phase three is <coughs> first, right? Yes. Right. Yeah. If you go back yeah, to this one, so you can see this is. This is pre yeah, road. So this is phase three. It's when they were starting to fill it all in. This actually used to be the Oxbow Channel. So they were actually not only filling in the land, they were also filling in all of the old waterways there as well. Right. So it was filled in this direction from the curb of Creek Road all the way down here. Right. Just because we started working closer to 42, we call this phase one. But it was actually the last part to be filled. And as Jen said, the Oxbell, which is what they call a creek that sort of goes up and around like a horseshoe, um, the original main stem of the Big Timber Creek used to go up and around all the way up here and then down again. Thank you. Um, and that is a historic boundary between uh, Gloucester County and Camden County. So this little area here is an island of land on the wrong side of the Big Timber Creek. It's an island of Deptford, Gloucester County, on the north side of the Big Timber Creek. All the rest of Deptford and Gloucester County is on the south side of the Big Timber Creek. So that's another uh, anomaly that uh, has made the, the project interesting. Very good. And then the other landfills were probably done bringing um, in the municipal waste around 1979. So this is pretty much what um, it looked like there was uh, approximately two to three feet of soil cover that was placed on top uh, of the landfill uh, in the early 1980s. Um, and then it was in the mid 1980s that the EPA did come in, um, they did do their case study, um, and it was determined not to be a super fun site, as Gary described, uh, because we weren't affecting like the underground aquifers. There was a nice clay layer underneath, and so all we really had to do was come in and actually properly cap and close it. So in 2004, we came in to the site. Um, what you found is that that two to three feet of soil cover, it actually just wasn't sufficient, or was it properly maintained? In other words, you had a cap that was eroding, trash was exposed, you had big, large depressions on top of the landfill where water would pull. You don't want water mixing with trash. That's what creates something called wastewater, otherwise known as leachate. And over the years, all of that water was pulling on the site, going down into the trash, and it was creating this big, huge mound of wastewater within the landfill that it actually started to seep out of the landfill and into Big Timber Creek, um, to the point that you can actually visibly see it coming you know, into the creek. Uh, it also had a, another large problem, and Gary will tell you about this one, uh, and why it's important. The landfill did have, uh, in between uh, phases two and three, uh, between the Deptford and Belmar side, um, it did have stormwater pipes that were installed during the landfill operation days in order to properly manage stormwater. But what had happened by 2006, these pipes were completely derelict, not being well taken care of, and they were in danger of failing. So what happens when you have a bunch of leachate in landfill and you have a bunch of stormwater that can't go anywhere? What happens, Gary? What, what was going to happen at that time? Actually, it was one of the more difficult parts of that project. We put uh, TV cameras up in the landfill. One of the pipes we actually couldn't find. The second pipe, we realized it was a major collapse. I had to go over and talk to this man right here and said, we have to do something like right away. I'm sure you know that water couldn't get through the landfill. They built the landfill in the path of the water. Could have flooded 80 blocks of Belmont. But more importantly, 
Code of Flood at uh, 42, that's right, being 6 lane road to Atlantic City. <coughs> Mayor immediately and, said, uh, I need to. Pardon me one second. And it's important to note that it's not just the water from the landfill that, you know, it's raining on the landfill. The natural progression oh, of water right. was it's from these the developed parts of landfill down to the creek. Before there was a Route 42 and everything else, there was there used to be a creek that went up this way, and naturally the water wants to go this way. And water goes where it wants to go. So what happened when they built 42, they actually put big pipes in to transport pull the water from this side of Belmar and the highway itself and they dump it in this area right here. So most of the water that was inundating the landfill was coming from off-site, but it had to get to the creek some way. So that's why it was such a significant problem. And at that point, that's when uh, Belmar, the mayor and council of Belmar, started looking for solutions because they knew that a small town like this could not do uh, clean up that would be tens of millions of dollars. Um, and, but they knew they couldn't do, they could not do nothing because that really wasn't an option. It really was a significant flooding risk. So at that time, that's when Gary Brown and BWD, uh, who are uh, professionals in remediation, um, became interested in the site, uh, met with Mayor and Council back in the day, and a, a plan was put together to remediate the entire site. Uh, the short version is, of course, the borough owned phase three already. Phases one and two were under a third party ownership. BWD acquired phase one and two, and then proceeded to submit a, a permit application uh, to remediate the whole site, including the borough's property, under one big permit. BWD entered into, uh, yes, sir? What year was that? What's up? What year was that? Uh, what was that, 2004 or 5? When was the MOU signed? The finding of the problem with the stormwater was in 2004. The investigation that he's talking about is 2004 to 2008. So BWD entered into a written agreement called an MOU with the NJDEP, <coughs> under which we voluntarily, we weren't responsible parties, we didn't pollute the site, we voluntarily agreed that we were going to acquire the site and remediate the site uh, along with uh, the, the borough of Delmar. Hey, Gary, can I say something? Yes, yeah. I just want to, if it wasn't for Gary's expertise, remember a storm we had six months ago, a rainstorm, a hundred year storm? If that, if that pipe wasn't put in, or the work that they did wasn't right, you would have trash all over 42, 295 all over Belmont. That's how bad. It probably be underwater. Too, That's what I'm saying. That's why how bad it was. But with that pipe, it saved a lot of people's homes and a lot of problems. He's actually, so what he, he actually doesn't say how good it is. Let me tell you what actually happened. We did. we did go up. We met with the DEP commissioner. The DOT, within several weeks, said, we don't know if this is pretty big. We don't know if we can handle it. The DOT gave this borough, the land to build that and get it as soon as possible. We combined all the permits. You know all these roads that are going on now? Guess what? That culvert was designed for the whole thing because he didn't want to see things ripped up two or three times. This is pretty rare in New Jersey, but I must say, we wanted it done, we wanted it right. We did our engineering, but we wanted all the permits together. The permit for the landfill and the borough, they gave it, the borough got the land, and it all came together very nice. It went very quick. Everybody took it. Serious. And that doesn't always happen in New Jersey, but I know you talk about how long the road. This culvert went in very quickly with full cooperation. They actually looked, believe it or not, this is actually true also, and I'll end this little shtick. They went and said, Does the borough have enough financial ability through its taxes to handle this culvert and everything? And the letter came back, Yes, they can handle it if everybody works together. And that's what we did. And we put the landfill together with the future development. It doesn't often happen this fast, but that was handled at the very top. Yeah, it's an of important DOT to note. And DEP, like right away, because it was important. And, so, and that culvert that Gary's talking about, because remember I said the creek used to go this way. It, it, so there's big pipes underneath 42, and there's like a, a natural pit here. That's where all the water goes. The culvert takes the water from here, which includes all this industrial area. The uh, the industrial park here and this residential area of Belmar 
all the water from the highways, both the existing 42 and the new ones we're building, and it conveys it along 42 down to the creek here, so it keeps it out of the landfill. It's what, a 10 or 12 foot box culvert, Gary? Oh, so I was just going to say, uh, yeah, you you might might a culvert is something that's a big box. Right. You know, and uh, some, and DOT, and you just have to keep reminding them of this, but the DOT has pledged to uh, pay their fair share uh, for that culvert, and that's something that uh, we continually address our friends at the DOT as well when they when they build the rest of these highway projects. Are they, are they the, uh, the pipes that lead from like the Midway main area over to behind the Belmar Level Lake? I'm sorry, what was that? You told us about the pipes. That's a different system. Yeah, it, it's, a, it's a 12 foot, it's a box culvert, a big pipe that runs, it's underground, that runs from here all the way down to here. From right where you get onto 42 South, right at the following yeah, right 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 road, 42 right South, and it goes south down to right before you go over from the there, all the way down here. It doesn't so that was a big part of the infrastructure. It doesn't go to the field. That's a different one, right? That's what it's yeah. Yeah. something different. Yeah. And the other part of it was um, that was obviously only the first thing you needed to be built. Um, much more environmental infrastructure needed to be built. <laughs> I got highlights of those. <laughs> Let's go to that. We'll uh, but to date, 100% um, of the radiation of phase one is done. That's a total of 54 acres. Um, and like Gary said, the final, uh, all the documentation is into the DEP that finalizes everything uh, that's been you know, done. So that permit application is in process. Um, about 98% of the radiation of phase two is complete. Um, and about 90% of phase three, and that's the borough's property, is complete. And of course, we've had major elements of remediation, some of the biggest things, uh, stormwater management. So I know a lot of times I've come in here and like we just have like the big things up and we just kind of like point to them, but I thought it was important to kind of highlight on plans. So this is our Route 42, and then this is our Creek Road. And we have a stormwater pipe, as you can see, that goes from Route 42 all the way down to Creek Road. So like pretty much the entire length of the site and then runs down a portion of Creek Road as well. In phase three, this is right 295 right here. We also installed another stormwater pipe that runs down here and then discharges into Big Timber Creek. So all together, I mean, we're probably somewhere around 3,000 feet, uh, feet, linear feet of stormwater pipe uh, that was installed just to manage all of the pretty much rainwater that comes down, to manage it so that it doesn't go into the landfill, but it stays outside the landfill and goes where it should. What years were they put? It took a while. <laughs> um, this one, I believe, was started, uh, I want to say we started this one probably around 2011 or 12, um, and then we had some minor adjustments to make. I think it was completely finalized uh, by 2016, 2015, 2016. Um, and then this one was put in around 2013 or 14 along 295. We actually had to fill in a lot of the area here. There used to be a very large ditch here that was the remnants of the creation of Route 295. That's that, behind the industrial property. <laughs> We're along it? No, no, that's, uh, no, that's not the industrial part. It's right along 295 here. So this is Creek Road comes around like this. Okay. Right, so it's, yeah, so it runs that's, along that's here. Clean place. Okay. Yeah, and then there used to be a large ditch right here. And so the creek water, because it's tidal, would run up and come back down and up and down. So we had to get that all filled in. So wasn't, that it wasn't was that Big Timber Creek cuts off and goes underneath the 42. Right there. This is uh, no, this is 295. That goes under 295 over here. 295 is where it goes under 42. 295. 295. When you drive down 295, where the landfill comes, it's all nice. It's real low. Yeah. What's what's the joke of the day, Mayor? When we went through the files, how many permits did the DOT get? <laughs> but they went across today. There wasn't any in the file, but we stayed all this out. Oh, sorry, let's change the slide. But yes, this is still the right area. So this is of the whole site. We also manage stormwater. Like, um, if it's not being managed through the pipes, we do want to get it. The site is graded properly so the water runs off and it runs down to all of these highlighted stormwater channels. They're surface water channels made of stone and fabric and it directs all the stormwater down the slope to the creek such that it does not infiltrate down the slope. I'm going to show you one thing. Gary, before you start, I wanted to let you know, Gary, the mayor from Belmore is here. He had a lot to do with it. He worked for the mayor of Belmore. So 
I just want to make sure you all know that the Chuck Slaughter, the mayor, is here. And thank you for being here, Mayor. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. One of the things that we did worry about, and before I came and worked on this project, I used to work on other landfill projects, and we always worried, how do you get the water up here down? Because there's a lot of times there's creeks and stuff like that. But this is a special creek. They really were not the big timber creek. The water that moves here, this comes up to the Death River Mall, goes down here, it goes to the Delaware River, the turnpikes down here. We were getting flows of tens, more than 10,000 cubic feet per second. I know you may not realize what that means, but we could not anchor our boat and sit and take samples. It was gross. We worked with the uh, this camp, or they, like, they call it the Friends of Israel, they allowed us to put it down there. But this was not easy work. But you see these little things here? They don't look much on plan. Here's what these do. We got special assistance from DDP, the top people that have accepted. There's Fred Mighty's around here. You go this, this is called the Beaver Brook. This is channel that comes up and down the tides. If we couldn't handle this water right, it would have dried out the bottom of the slopes. But what we found out, we actually had some special people, good ecologists come up from Atlanta County and the Conservation District. They said, don't take down the frag mighties and that stuff. That is natural in Big Timber Creek in sections. And they said, if you keep it through construction, and then you can find out the way to get the water down here, you will put it back to the way it was, and you don't have to build big basins. There's no big basins here. Go to another construction site and find no big basins there are any. So what happens when we have the water, this is rainwater runoff, sits up at the top, it comes safely down the slope in riprap, and then it infiltrates and it keeps all the bottom of our slopes all the way around flat. So during dry periods, we don't have the problems that they have a lot of other sites. Frankly, it works out better than I ever thought it would. But let you just keep going along with your presentation. I just wanted to tell you that because very few places have these, and we put them in just the right places based on DEP's recommendation. Phragmites are natural wetlands vegetation. They're very tall, and they provide natural infiltration um, of water uh, right at the edge of the creek. And of course, we had to build some walls. Um, this is actually almost directly adjacent to where the stormwater pipe is. Again, this is your Route 42. Over here you have Creek Road. We had to install what's called a bentonite cutoff wall that ran all along here. So this is basically just outside the edge of waste. And what we had to do is install a wall. It's not a wall that you can see. It's a below ground wall that you can't see. Um, and what that does is that prevents any groundwater from higher <coughs> elevations from entering the site because the site is at a lower elevation and everything surrounding it. So that bentonite slurry wall was installed. Again, that's probably about 1,700 feet long. And associated with that, that's why you see double lines here, is what's called an under drain. So basically, there's a drain on the other side of the wall, on the upside of the wall, not a landfill side, and it touches the underground water, and it conveys it over here to the beautiful flower system we were talking about. So all the water from off-site that travels underground and wants to try to get into our landfill, we're diverting it around the landfill. Uh, we also had to, this actually, I apologize, I couldn't get a big overview. Uh, this gives you an idea, this is a steel bulkhead that we had to put along uh, pretty much adjacent, right along phase two here. We had to install a steel bulkhead because when we did our initial investigations, that's where we saw the majority um, of actual trash coming out of the landfill and entering into the Big Timber Creek. So a steel bulkhead was in place right along here. What happens is that the fast water that comes up in the turnpike bridge that I talked about before, you ever go down there, it's really beautiful down there. I gotta tell you, if you're down there, you won't see anything bad. You can't see Philly. A lot of people go down there and we're skiing, but there's a big swing. Because of the big swing, we and the EP were concerned that that would keep so we put in a big, big bulkhead, driving sheet pile and so on like that. And it's not moved an inch since it's been put in. But that was an important feature. Thank you. Absolutely. And of course the feature so you can see a little bit more where the culvert is. 
So this is kind of picture split. But here's your root 42. Here's uh, here's where you got currently going with the 42. So it's right at the corner here, and it goes all the way down to right before the bridge. This is where that curve. This is where that curve is. You know, order moves. What's the move yeah. when you have a big That's storm? Right. You got to put in what you really need for your site. That worked out well. So that is a, another view of the location of the culvert as well. And then of course, we Here's have what happened. To... I told Jen in prior years we didn't have drone shots. So I said, <laughs> the man wants drone shots. So that these are for uh, uh, this mayor and the past mayor. We appreciate it. Go ahead, Jen. The Absolutely, nice. yes. Yes, drone shots are good. I didn't take them myself, but I did tell them where to take them. <laughs> so, um, of course, capping is the, one of the biggest remedial features um, of the landfill. Um, we had to uh, bring in soil to properly grade the site and cap the site. We had to grade it so it's at a 3% slope. So like we said, all the water runs off and doesn't pool or pond. As you can see, this is phase one, uh, where the capping and vegetation and all the remediation has been completed. This right here, this is your Route 42. So it's from a different angle. And we're going to get view now. And then, I, like Gary said, back here is technically Beaver Brook. And then when you come around this corner, it becomes Big Timber Creek. So that's our phase one. Hold on a count, and then you can see. That's the problem you have. I have a problem. I'm sorry. Phase one is where I have the problem with. What, what's the problem? Uh, I personally know that there's been drugs of oil. Sir, I talked to you up front, told you a lot of things that are not true, that are not I'm true. You, Here's what I say to you one more time, sir. <laughs> this is true. Okay, okay this is true. This is true. This is, let you speak and then I'll say something. Go ahead. And say it. I'm three times we've asked people to come to our office and spend all day and be with me. Nobody does it. You give me that time and I'll do it. But if you're going to come into my meeting, you're going to tell me things that are no state records and no drawings, then I'm going to say, please come and see me, because I am a servant to you, I'm licensed. But nobody ever does, man. So I, I know Mr. Bridges' name uh, calls me uh, EPA and DEP. Uh, and, 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 this, and they call this gentleman here at DEP, and then he offers them to come and see files, and nobody shows up. I will stop right now. Give me a day. Give me a day to come to my office, and I will meet you there now and two other dates. Because people say these things, and they never show up. We even ask people to show up over here where our office is, right over here. And the same thing. We send emails. No one shows up. Would you like to give me a date, sir? Because I think that people should get the honest information that's in the public and record. And if you have any information or records, we well, can answer. I don't have records. I, I've seen stuff. Uh, well, if you could provide some information where you saw it, we'd be okay. happy to know about it. In 1970. Let, let me just say, uh, and then please, I'll give you the floor again. Um, this site has been extensively studied. It was studied by the feds um, you know, back in the day, uh, the EPA study to determine whether they thought there was any evidence